למעלות. אסע עיניי אל הערים, מאין יבוא עזרי. פשוט מראה ורבותיי, זה פה משל אופה שם, אז יו נו, בעזרת השם, הוא היה אפוצ'ינג שביעי של פסח. שביעי של פסח is the second holiday of פסח. We call it the crossing of the sea. The Jewish people they cross the sea. As you know, when they left Egypt, Pao followed them. The question is, how it's possible that Pao, he followed them after the 10 makot that he received. I do not understand. What it is the reason that Pao, he followed the Jews again. I mean, Hashem, destroyed all Egypt. There is nothing left. The economic, the economic collapse. All the, the firstborn, firstborn pass away, die. The only firstborn who remained alive it was Paro. And now what happened? That Paro, he followed the Jews again. I don't understand. I do not understand. There is a, something incredible. When the Bnei Israel, they saw Pao coming after them to, to take them back to Egypt, they were shocked. They said to Moshe, Moshe Rabbeinu, Moshe, what's going on? So Moshe, he started to pray to Hashem. And Hashem, he said to Moshe, Moshe, Why are you praying? Let's go. Tell the Jews to go straight ahead. But where to? I mean, straight ahead into the sea. It's a suicide. I told you, go straight ahead. My friend, I don't understand. We know that Hashem, He like when we pray to Him. Like today, there is Corona virus. Well, we are we are afraid. We are scared. We all everything is paralyzed. I mean, I'm telling you, I am in my house. It's already a month that I didn't see the street. I am in the house. I don't move from here. Me and my wife, we don't go nowhere. And I don't know how, how, how long it's going to last. Maybe another month, maybe two months, maybe three months. I don't know. Only Hashem knows. One thing I tell you, we are fighting, all of us, all the world, against a virus that we don't know where he is hiding. We don't know where. We know he is in the street. That's why we advise everybody, don't go out to the street. He's there, but where? We don't know. We don't know. We're fighting an invisible virus. Usually you have enemy, you know who you fight to. But this kind of virus, we don't know. Who is it? No, no one still finds something. All nations, they try to find something. All nations, they, they said, there is, there is, there is, but we don't know. We don't know. The only medication, the only antivirus that there is, is Imuna. Corona, Imuna. That's it. Hashem, I want to show you. If I want to paralyze the world, I can. I want the world to go, to go on, I can. You know, how many people tonight, it's a Monday night, I'm going to give a darush, for five people that pass away in Morocco. One among them is the Gaon Rab Shalom Edelman, Alava Shalom, and another four people, young people that pass away with the corona. 
So you see, my friend, what do we do today? We pray to Hashem. We have a problem. When a child has a problem, he cries. He wants to eat. He wants milk. He wants his mother. He wants a company. So I don't understand. Moshe Rabbeinu, Allah Shalom. He prayed to Hashem, and Hashem said to Moshe Rabbeinu, Why are you pray? Tell the Jews to go ahead. But to go ahead where? To the sea. They don't know how to swim. To, to go back. The Egyptians are, ba- are behind them. Right and left is desert. What, to go where? But my friend, you have to know this. You have to know this. Hashem, He wants you to give a lesson, a message to Moshe Rabbeinu. Moshe, why you are the only one always when there is a problem, you pray. Let them pray as well. I miss their tefillot. I want them to pray. I mean, it's easy. You have a problem, you call a rabbi. I have a problem, ba 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 and the rabbi, you give a donation to the rabbi, the rabbi pray for you, and that's it. Now, look today, you have to know, rabbis, even the rabbis, they need to pray for themselves. Today, each one should pray for the other one. There is, there is something that you have to know. When you pray for somebody, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, He bless you. We learn this from the Kohanim. When the Kohanim, instead of praying for themselves, they pray for the Jews, so HaKadosh Baruch pray, give a bracha to the Kohanim. Hashem give the bracha to the Kohanim and to the Jews as well. So everybody is winning. In this Corona, we need to pray. Each one should pray for himself. Each one should pray for the other one. Don't ask people to pray for you. But you forget yourself. No. We need collective pray. Collective brachot. This is very, very important that you should know. That's what Hashem said to Moshe. Moshe, you know why I, I, you know why I tell you why you pray? Because I don't want you to just you to pray. I want the Jews as well to pray all together. And now, then Moshe Rabbeinu said, Hey, Rabotai, hey, 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 Jews, we have to pray. And we have to go straight. But where? To the sea? Yes, no. Should we listen? People they did not know what to do. To go to the sea, to go backward. To fight the Egyptian, to do what? Then Nashon Na, Ba'aminadav, he decided, hey, have an idea. Hashem, he wants us to pray. There is, when you believe in Hashem, so you have to follow what Hashem he said. Hashem he said, pray, so we pray. But you have to do an action, not pray and stay. No. You have to do something. Hashem he said, Tell the Jews to carry on. So, anyone who listens to the voice of Hashem, that means that he believes in Hashem. I mean, a lot of people, they do what Hashem wants them to do. But they don't, with no conviction. They do. They keep Shabbat, they put in, but with no conviction. When you do something, you have to do it with conviction. Hashem he said, pray and go. So we pray and go. Let's go to the sea. It's a suicide. There is no suicide. If Hashem said to go, to go. So Nachshon ben Amin Adav, he was the first one that he crossed, he went, till the water arrived to his mouth. And then he said, Hashem, please, I did what you want me to do. Let the sea split. Now, Now we understand. Now the question is, is Paul mad? After all what happened to him, he followed the Jews to this. After them, he went after them again. I mean, after all the the Makkot, all 
always Hashem give him as he hurt him so much, again he go. My friend, I would like to tell you something incredible. Hashem is very clever. Very, very clever. Hashem, he knows everything. I don't know if you know or you don't know. There were, there were two people. Datam and Abiram. Those two people, always they were against Moshe Rabbeinu. Always. In Egypt. Because of them, Moshe Rabbeinu left Egypt. He was a prince in Egypt. He was a, he could bring a lot of uh, a lot of good things to the Jews that they were slaves. Because of Moshe, Paro gave Shabbat to the Jews. Because Moshe Rabbeinu, he, he asked Paro, Paro, if you want the slaves to work well, give them one day a week to rest. Otherwise, they, they'll die. So he asked him, which day give them? Give them Shabbat. So Paro accepted. So you can imagine, pa, Moshe, he was a prince. He was the son of Batya. The Batya, she was princess, the daughter of Paro. So Paro, he respected him. So he could reduce the starvation from the Jews. But, 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 Datam and Abiram, they were bad people. They went to Paro, they told Paro, you know Moshe, the prince, he killed an Egyptian. So, Paro, when he heard this, he said, what? Moshe, a Jew, he killed an Egyptian? I'm going to kill him. So, he ran away. And uh, maybe f 40 or 50 or 60 years later, he came back. When he came back, he was already 80 years old. Or less than 80 years old. Less than 80. And then, Hashem said to Moshe, Moshe, I know, Datan va Abiram, they are, because of them, you, you, you left Egypt. Now, they are, they have no, they are not powerful anymore. They lost all their money. You can't go back. They, have, they, will, they cannot be against you. So he came back to Egypt. And then he started all the fight with, during one year, with, uh, with, uh, against Paro. But something happened. Listen to this. When Moshe Rabbeinu came to Paro, he told him, Hashem sent me that let my people go. Paro said to Moshe, who is Hashem? I don't know Hashem. And then Paro said to Moshe, Moshe, why you don't go to Goshen? Go to you. You are from the tribe of Levi. Go there. And stay there. Why you, why you disturb the Jews? Now, I'm going to give them more work. More work. And unfortunately, Paro started to be more nasty, more bad to the Jews. So the Tanva Abiram at that time, they were like the police. And their, their function was to give the Jews work. And now something happened. You know what? Paro said to the to the to the, to, to the Jewish police that they should take care of the Jews that they should do their work. If they don't do their work, they should hit them. And the police they didn't hurt them. So what the Egyptians did, they hurt the Jewish police. My friend, Hashem when he saw that the Jewish police, they get hurt, they get insults, and the, from the Egyptian, only, only because not to hurt other Jews, so Hashem give them kavod, Hashem give them, you know, to be 
the Zkinim. Hashem, you give them a function, you give them a title when they left Egypt. Hashem, you give because this is Ahavat Israel. To get hurt and you don't hurt somebody. If somebody tell you, hurt him or hurt you, hurt me, I will not hurt him. And the of Abiram, that's what he did. Now you understand, my friend? But that of Abiram, even though that they were Rishayim, but they had a good heart toward other Jews. So during the, the year that Hashem was giving, was giving the Makkot to the Egyptian, some Jewish people they decided not to go, not to leave Egypt. They said, well, if Hashem wants to give us, a, give us a Torah, why we have to go to the mountain of Sinai? Let Hashem bring us the Torah here and we stay in Egypt. Why we have to go to the desert? Now the Egyptian, they are afraid of us. What Hashem did, the Midrash said, he took, he killed all those Jews that didn't want to leave Egypt. Because Hashem said, I do all those miracles that I will take you out from Egypt, I will take you out from being slaves to give you the Torah, to, to give you the land of Israel. And now you want to stay here? So during the play of darkness, he took them. But the Atam, Nadav Abihu, those two, Hashem didn't kill them. Why he didn't kill them? Even though that they were Rishayim, even though that he wanted to stay in Egypt, he didn't kill them. Why? Because Hashem he wanted to give them the reward. Hashem sometimes he gives the reward to the Rishayim in this world, not to give them the reward up there. So Hashem he said, he decided to give them their reward in this world that they will not lie, die. So when the Jews left Egypt and Pesach, Datam, Vabiram, they didn't leave Egypt. So in the morning, when Pao he saw Datam, Datam, Vabiram, he said, Hey, Jew, you didn't go with your brothers? No, we prefer to stay here. Oh, super. Ah, and why Hashem didn't kill you? Like he killed all, the, all those Jews and the darkness play that he didn't want to leave Egypt. Well, we don't know. So Paro started to think, wow, maybe your God, he forgot you. So that means that your God is not as strong as I thought he was. Wow. Okay, you're welcome to, in Egypt. So Hashem, he decided that Paro, Hashem, he saw that Paro, he didn't, he don't believe at 100% of that Hashem is the God. So Hashem, he said, Paro, now that you think that I am not strong enough, and still you think that I forgot Nadab Abiyu, he did not know that I left Nadab Abiyu to live because to give him the reward in this world, not up there, for what they did, for the for the the makot that they received from the from the Egypt the the Egypt the police Egyptian, because that that time Abraham they didn't hurt the Jews. So now I'm going to finish with you. Now you understand why Paro decided to go again after the Jews because Paro thought that Hashem is weak. So Hashem. He made the heart of Pao strong to maintain his to be to to go after the Jews to bring them back, and then Hashem finished with Pao. In the meantime, when Pao arrived to where the Jews were in the desert, and uh, Hashem made a separation. And this is split. They saw that Hashem is going to drown the Egyptian the sea. So they pray to Hashem, please Hashem, forgive us. We do Teshuvah. 
and Hashem never forget, never refuse the teshuva of nobody. So he let them go inside the Jews, and Paro is really did teshuva. When Paro he saw how the sea split and the sea started to drown all the Egyptians, he said, Mi kamucha ba'elim Hashem? Who is like you, Hashem? My friend, this is a Dvar Torah for Shvei Shepesa. Don't forget, every day we think about Shvei Shepesa. Because every day we, we read as Hashem Moshe Ben Israel. Every day we share the Shira. It's very important. This miracle of that Hashem cross, he split the sea, we will never forget it. You know why? Every day we repeat. Because every day we have problems. And every day we need Kerat Yamsuf. Every day we need Hashem to, to do us a miracle, to break the, the problem we have and, and have a solution. Today we have a Corona. We need Hashem to do Kerat Yamsuf, Kerat Corona, that the Corona will split, disappear. Be'ezat Hashem. Hashem bless you. I wish to all our friends of Buenos Aires, Mexico, America, Costa Rica, to all our friends, Hak Sameach, Kashel Epeza, this Dvar Torah, in the memory of the Chief Rabbi of Israel that passed away today, Rabbi Eliyahu, Bakshi Doron, Allah Vashalom, May soul rest in peace, Amen. God bless you. מכל רע, ישמור את נפשך, אדוני ישמור צאתך ובואך, מעתה